But I tell you, Larry, I see this stuff going on on the news, and I can't even believe it. It's so ridiculous. It's like satire. It, 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 it's like a Monty Python episode. I, I mean, does the con controlled crazy left realize how whacked out they are? I mean, they're running things. They must know what they're doing. What's happening here? No, no, they don't realize it. And, and Alex, thank you very much for having me on. 95% of black voters voted for Barack Obama, and the black economic condition is worse off than when Obama took office. Black income is down. Black net worth has down about a third over the last few years. Uh, the so-called wealth gap between whites and blacks is the widest it's been in 25 years. Um, I, I don't know what more Obama could have done to the black economy other than take a baseball bat to it. And still he is celebrated by black voters. I don't get it. The primary problem in America is not police officers going after black people. It's not the Confederate flag. It is the implosion of the black family. Back in 1965, 25% of black kids were born outside of wedlock. Now, Alex, the number is over 70%. I didn't say this. Obama said it. If you grow up without a dad, you are five times more likely to be poor, nine times more likely to drop out of school, 20 times more likely to end up in jail. Do the math. Why are we talking about that? How do we go from nine innocent worshipers uh, in Charleston being murdered by this guy to a discussion about the Confederate flag? It is just bizarre. And in 1963, Alex, four black kids were bombed uh, in Birmingham. And that time, George Wallace was the governor of, of Georgia, the one who said segregation now, segregation forever. Uh, the chief cop was a guy that sicked water hoses and dogs on black people. The Klan was so virulent, uh, they called Birmingham Bombingham because there were two or three bombings just that very week. Fast forward to now, the South Carolina governor uh, is a woman of Indian descent. Uh, one of the two senators is a black person. Uh, and we're still talking about racism in America. Give me a break. This is not your grandfather's America for crying out loud. And I guess the controlled left uses race to manipulate people and to divert off the real issues. And so they're desperate to, I guess, reassert it on a new generation to create more division. I mean, what are they trying to do? That's exactly what they're trying to do. They can't talk about economic growth because this recovery has been the worst one arguably we've ever had, certainly the worst one since the Second World War. So let's divert attention. Let's talk about racism. Let's talk about Rachel Dolezal. Let's talk about the Confederate flag. Let's talk about anything other than the damage the left has done to the black family, uh, to the inner cities, to black income. Alex, I wrote a book called Dear Father, Dear Son, and I urge your listeners to, to just – Read the reviews before you decide to buy the book. It's about my father who did not know his biological father. No, I've read the, the book. Jim I couldn't put it down. I read it a couple years ago when it came out. Thank you. He grew up in the Jim Crow South, uh, and he got kicked out of the house by his mother when he was 13 years old, never to return. And my father was a Republican, and he believed that the biggest thing that happened negatively to black America was the welfare state. And my father told my brothers and me, don't listen to other people talk about how horrible the country is because it's substantially different than it was when I grew up. Hard work wins. You get out of life what you put into it. And while you can't control the outcome, you are 100% in control of your effort. Uh, and before you bitch and moan and whine about what the man has done to you, go to the mirror, look into the mirror and find out whether or not you could have done something to have altered the outcome. That's what my dad told my brothers and me. That's what I believe now. But uh, but Obama has convinced black people that uh, that they're victims and that those guys over there, the Tea Partiers, Republicans, black Republicans, they're victimizers. And by the way, we're the rescuers. We're, the, in the, we're there in the white hat on the white horse. We're going to come in and we're going to give you social justice. Never mind economic growth. Never mind the implosion of the black family. Never mind the implosion of black home equity. Never mind black home ownership down. Never mind any of the other metrics I just now gave you. Let's call America uh, inherently racist, say it's in our DNA, and convince black people to pull that lever 95% for us. And by the way, Alex, if racism is in our DNA, how do you go from 1960, according to Gallup, 60% of Americans said they would never vote for a black president, no matter how qualified. Obama, of course, gets elected in 2008, gets reelected in 2012, despite a lousy economic recovery and unpopularity of Obamacare. In 1955, only 4% of blacks, of, of whites and blacks in America said that they approved of black-white marriages. 
Uh, uh, and now 87% of Americans approve of black-white marriages. So if it's in our DNA, how do those things change? It's nonsense. Obama got a higher percentage of the white vote than John Kerry did. Did Kerry whine about uh, being affected by racism because he didn't get the majority of white votes? It's outrageous what the left has done to convince black people that, that they are victims, that racism remains a major problem in America when it is not. And by the way, pull the lever for the left-wing party because we're going to fight social justice on your behalf. It is outrageous. My problem is there's no doubt the Republicans have a better platform and better, more Americana ideas that'll make us a successful country and what made us so great. And they're the party that helped end slavery. They're the party that passed the Civil Rights Act. It is an inverted reality that we see here. But the Republican leadership now goes along with the Democrats and never really calls Obama out uh, on what they're doing. And so yeah, until that happens, I, I don't think this country has a prayer because I grew up in Dallas, Texas. And, you know, going to high school there, I mean, probably a third of the high school or more was black. Uh, and most, you know, my friends in sports and stuff were black. There was some racism back and forth, but that was mainly between hillbillies and uh, who were racist and black folks that were racist. But it, but it wasn't anything like it is now where you're just bombarded with it. I mean, it is just insane. Yeah, uh, the Republican Party, uh, 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 interesting that uh, Eric Holder said that America, when it comes to race, is a nation of cowards. I would say the Republican Party, when it comes to race, uh, is a party of cowards. Instead of saying what I just now said, it's, oh, I once marched with Martin Luther King 50 years ago. I care. I care. What you ought to be talking about is the damage the left has done to the black middle class, the damage things like race-based preferences have done. They've created a higher dropout rate among uh, black students. They get in under uh, race-based preferences. They ought to be talking about uh, the damage done to the city through urban renewal and through forced busing. They ought to be talking about these lousy government schools where 50 percent of blacks drop out of school and those who graduate cannot read, write, and compute at grade level. Instead, we're talking about what the white man has done and the Confederate flag and nonsense that has nothing whatever to do with the current plight of the black middle class. Well, I think you've really hit the nail on the head there when you talk about they've taken our basic freedoms, they've taken our economic future, they've taken our jobs, and then all they give us is identity politics that's why they're now drilling down into saying transgender. Don't say dad and mom. Right. Don't say husband and wife. Don't say boy or girl. Uh, they're doing this with a straight face to just kill any identity that isn't just worshiping the state. And that is why, Alex, Trump is resonating. And if I were Trump, I'd broaden the argument. He has not made the argument that illegal aliens pose a threat to job prospects of people living in the inner city. A friend of mine is named Peter Kersenow. He sits on the U.S. Civil Rights Commission. He's black, and he said that all three sectors of the commission, uh, moderates, uh, uh, conservatives, and liberals, agreed to a letter they sent to Marsha Fudge, a woman who's on the Congressional Black Caucus, caucus and said, what's going on? Why aren't you stopping these porous borders? You're threatening the jobs and the promotions of inner city people, most of whom are black people. And he said he hasn't even heard back. So what Donald Trump should be talking about, in addition to talking about the illegality, is the threat that illegal aliens pose, the job prospects of people living in the inner city. Sure, and, and, and nothing against the people pouring across wanting a better life, but here's the bottom line. A lot of them are criminals fleeing justice, and that's a fact. But more importantly, they are colonizing the former black areas and pushing the blacks out and taking the jobs. That's why the unemployment doubled. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. I'm your host, Alex Jones, syndicated radio host, best-selling author. Larry Elder is our guest till about 40 after. This is a short segment. We'll be back with us in the next segment. Elderstatement.com, LarryElder.com are his websites. Larry, I want to get into the Donald Trump phenomenon because the mainstream media wouldn't be saying his name thousands of times a day and misrepresenting what he's saying if they didn't have a plan. And I think it is to distract from the other Republican candidates thinking that Trump isn't serious is going to drop out later. That's just what my gut's saying. But regardless, he's saying things that are true, so he has to be defended. But I know he's a really smart guy. He doesn't seem to defend himself very well uh, in the way he's responding uh, to a lot of this. But you were getting into black unemployment that, as you were just saying, has doubled the last seven years. And there's incredible friction between the immigrant community that's mainly Hispanic and blacks, that's that's in local news. Where do you see all this going? 
Well, I, I disagree. I, I think Donald Trump has been defending himself just fine by not apologizing, by not backing down the way Republicans normally do. Recall when Todd Akin said legitimate rape, all he was saying is some women, in fact, lie about rape. Not not very many do, but about 10 percent apparent, uh, apparently do. Uh, all of a sudden, Rance Priebus dumped on him uh, and Todd Akin got destroyed in the election. Donald Trump has not backed down. He's not afraid of being called a bigot. And I interviewed Jamil Shaw Sr., the, the father of the of the young man who was murdered here in uh, in South Central Los Angeles, a young man who was bound to go to college uh, and an illegal alien had just gotten out of prison and assumed that the red that uh, Jamil Shaw II was wearing was an indication of gang membership when in fact Shaw was not a member of a gang and he got blown away. Uh, and uh, Donald Trump has brought out Jamil Shaw Sr. to talk about all of this and to humanize this. This is very important. Sure, well Larry, I wanna be very, clear. I mean, I mean, I think he has done well not apologizing uh, I just, there's so many factoids, things you were mentioning, uh, that, I mean, I guess if he had your brain on these issues, it'd be better. <laughs> That's all I'm saying is that... I wish, it, I, had it, his, wish I had his brain and his wealth. <laughs> no, 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 I hear you, but you're an expert on this is what I'm saying. And then yeah. he just... Sure, he's not apologizing. That's 101. Don't do that. I agree with you. He's doing a pretty good job. It's just that they're misrepresenting him, and I don't think he's been attacking them for their lies. He just kind of uh, arrogantly, which I guess is a good thing, just ignores him and says, I don't apologize. Well, that's true, but it, but it's early. He'll get sharper. He'll get better. He'll get more factoids. He'll sharpen up uh, his arguments along the way, assuming he stays in. And so far, uh, it's been it's been pretty darn impressive. I was one of those Alex who thought he was never going to get in. Every four years, he comes out, makes a big display about running, and then he doesn't run. And I also didn't think he had as as much money as he says he has. Apparently, he does have nine million. Apparently, he can self fund. There's never been a candidate like this with this kind of message, this kind of name recognition, and that kind of bankroll. And so this. Is could be, this could get very interesting. So you think he's serious? Well, it does show the other, you know, 10 or 11 candidates. Why aren't they getting hardcore on anchor babies? I mean, El Chapo, the billionaire drug dealer, uh, is on record telling his wife to come up here and have anchor babies. We have to pay for billionaire drug dealers' kids now? I mean, this is ridiculous. He's also on record threatening Donald Trump for crying out loud. Um, and this issue is a very important issue for people in, living in the inner city. And I think once more black people realize he's talking to them and talking about their economic interests, it'll be fascinating to see what kind of black support this Republican guy gets. Well, I mean, I would certainly rather Donald Trump than a Hillary Clinton in there. But in your gut, and I really respect your opinion on this, you don't think he's some type of ringer just getting political attention uh, for his overall empire. Oh, I think it's all of the above. I, I think that Donald Trump feels the worst thing that'll happen is his name recognition will be even higher and maybe he'll make even more money. But I don't think he anticipated the fallout. I don't think he anticipated that ESPN and NASCAR uh, and Univision uh, and NBC would dump him. And other people are also thinking about dumping him. Uh, he may even lose uh, uh, clients in his uh, in his condos. Who knows? But I think overall what Donald Trump feels is the worst that'll happen is my brand will be even bigger, but maybe I'll make some noise. Maybe Maybe I'll make something happen. And, and let's not uh, uh, discount the possibility that he's sincere. He thinks the country is going to hell in a handbasket. He thinks our foreign policy is weak. Uh, he thinks our deals with the various other countries are weak. And he thinks the country is going down. And he thinks he, as a business person, can do something about it. Uh, I, I applaud the idea of him uh, going off the grid for this time and spending his time and his energy and his money uh, trying to make the country better as opposed to making more money. Why aren't people applauding that? I guess I have to say I applaud him because he is getting persecuted yeah. now and he's not backing down and he's not going to do the Miss America thing. And he's going to focus on the campaign. Again, though, Larry, d doesn't this show the other Republicans what they should have been doing the whole time? It most certainly does. The other Republicans are wusses. And that's one of the things that that pisses people off. I mean, how did we get Obamacare shoved down our throats? How did that happen? Obamacare, uh, unpopular, not a single Republican vote, and you guys couldn't figure out a way legislatively of stopping this thing? Larry Elder, LarryElder.com, stay there. I want to come back and get your take on how, how do we reverse Obamacare? How do we control the border? How do we st stop the hemorrhaging of our sovereignty straight ahead? And what is he most worried about with Obama in Obama's last year and a half? Final segment with Larry Elder, syndicated radio host, best-selling author. David Knight's got uh, analysis on all of this that ties together with Dinesh D'Souza being ordered by a Democrat judge to attend psychiatric counseling for his mental illness. The judge is now diagnosing from the bench uh, that uh, he thinks the government's too big and, and bad. That's now a mental illness that's right out of the Soviet Union. 
right out of the Soviet Union. So that's coming up in a moment. Again, Larry Elder has been breaking down how we're having our basic rights being removed, but they're being replaced with infighting and obsessing uh, over what color somebody is or, or, or where they're from. And then the sensitivity to it becomes just a ball and chain. But what I was getting at here is that what they do with political correctness on black and white relations or with the open borders or with kids can't call themselves boys or girls, but purple penguins because it's hurtful. We talk about this and it doesn't sound like reality. It sounds like mentally ill cult leaders run the country. And so if it's already gotten this bad and they want to kick Donald Trump off the air with his TV shows because he said we got a bunch of criminals coming up here to escape justice and they shouldn't be getting their babies paid for. I mean, nobody else allows this. And so it is a upside downing of reality. What comes next, Larry Elder? And, and how do we overturn this? How do we defeat this system when the public schools don't teach reading and writing anymore? They just teach bizarro basket casing of... of don't be a boy and girl. Uh, boys are in the girls' bathroom. Girls are in the boys. Uh, you, you know, you're a purple penguin. Uh, let's learn about your white guilt all day on MTV. I mean, it's just crazy. Donald Trump used the term silent majority. What people need to do is stand up and defend the values and the freedom that made this country great. We need more people like you speaking out. I mean, it is insane. And Donald Trump had the cashews to not once, not twice, but three times when he was in Phoenix. <laughs> uh, call Al Sharpton a con man. Who has done that? What other public figure has honestly and accurately called uh, Al Sharpton a con man other than Donald Trump? And Donald Trump gets dumped by NBC, but MSNBC, one of NBC's subsidiaries, has given Al Sharpton, perhaps the most notorious anti-Semitic race hustler in America, his nightly show for an hour. Scotty, beam me up. It's insane. And you're quoting uh, the uh, late uh, Congressman Jim Trafficant. I mean, it really is time to be beamed up, Scotty. I mean, this is, what do you expect next out of this lunacy? Uh, next thing, he's going to push for gun for further gun control. Every time something happened, like what happened in Charleston, South Carolina, Obama talks about more gun control. Now, Bill and Ruth did not stand up there after uh, communing with these nine innocent worshipers and pull out a Confederate flag and shoot people. He pulled out a 38. We ought to be talking about whether or not somebody in that church with a concealed carry permit might have minimized the damage. We ought to be talking about what's going on in Chicago sure. and Washington, D.C., two cities with very stringent gun control laws, very high per capita murder rate. Most of the people being killed are black people. We're not talking about that, though. We're talking about the Confederate flag and Donald Trump. It is crazy. Well, look, I don't want to pull a Han Solo here on folks, uh, Larry Elder. But if I was a senator, especially a black senator in the South, where there are some crazy racist white people, and I'm going to be given a sermon, there's going to be one of these up underneath the pulpit, 357 Magnum. Um, you know, it's only six shots, but I'm a good aim with it, and I'll be able to defend myself. I mean, in this day and age, we know more guns mean less crime. We know these killers, whether they be on drugs or be racist or whatever, only hit people they think are going to be disarmed. Isn't it time to start making uh, areas hard targets? I mean, when ISIS tried to attack in Garland outside Dallas, it was an off-duty cop took those guys out before they could kill anybody. I mean, isn't that the answer that he pulls that gun out and somebody pulls a gun out and blows him away and maybe only two people would have been dead, him and maybe the first person he shot? I mean, isn't that the answer? Isn't it gun-free zones and an anti-gun culture really what ended up killing these people? That That is the answer, or, or at least that, that even the odds a little bit for the good guys. There are now 40 states that allow citizens to carry concealed weapons on a shell-issue shell basis, and if it returns us to the so-called wild, wild west, why hasn't at least one of those states repealed it? They haven't. And speaking of racism, uh, obviously this guy was a racist, but to act like he's some sort of tip of the spear, back in 1969, another white guy named Charlie Manson wanted to start a race war, and he had a family. And he got seven white people killed over two nights. We didn't talk about how much racism there is in America. We said Charlie Manson is a racist nutcase, and so is this guy. So let's not act as if some sort of movement on the part of white people to mow down black people. 
uh, this is a deviant individual who acted in a an evil, vicious way, and we ought not assume that therefore this reflects the racism in America's DNA, and therefore shows that we're not quote cured of racism. We're never going to be cured of racism. Ten percent of the American people, Alex, believe Elvis is still alive. Eight percent believe if you send him a letter, he's going to get it. That's a lot of people in America, but you can't act. You can't. You can't um, look for Nirvana. We're never going to have Nirvana. Well, I mean, he also this this roof guy like to wear black outfits. Does that mean anybody that's into wearing black like Johnny Cash is a racist? I mean, it's just he crazy. Had, he also had a gold T-shirt on, and he also had the flags of Rhodesia and South Africa. Should we ban those as well? For crying out loud, it wasn't the Confederate flag that made him do what he did. He's an evil degenerate and should be regarded as such, the same way we regarded Charlie Manson. Well, notice both of them were on hard drugs. Both of them were on hard drugs. Both of them wanted to start a race war. And both of them thought by doing this, uh, they would start one. They were both crazy. They're both insane. We assumed Manson was insane and a deviant, but we're acting like Dylan Roof represents some sort of uh, uh, movement in America, when in fact he doesn't. Sure. In fact, can we put Dylan Roof and Charlie Manson pictures of them up on screen as soon as you can? You look at both of them, they have that crazy look in their eye. They sure do. And, and my again, again in, in '69, we said Charlie Manson was a was a hateful deviant. Why are we saying the same thing about Dylan Roof all these years later, after we've had the election of a black president and the re-election of a black president? I mean, I look at Charlie Manson and I just see. I mean, look at them; they've got the same crazy look in their eye, and That's they right. were both on hard drugs. And in Manson's case, he at least had a following. Uh, Dylan Roof, in his racist manifesto, complained that he couldn't even get anybody to follow him. He said the Klan wouldn't even follow him. That's the extent to which racism has reduced as a problem here in America. And let's just say it. The Democrats that were the party of the Klan are very upset that their race politics might be in trouble. So they're trying to reignite it. And Larry, in closing, I want you to comment on this and whatever else is on your radar. Because I've been asking the questions. But my concern is you see the knockout game. And those are isolated, but it is happening a lot around the country. You do see racial attacks against whites. And the people doing it really think they're doing a good job because the media has told them, you know, all white people hate you. And they're the reason you're unemployed. And they got a bunch of young kids, hoodlums. I mean, if you see them, the same folks that are robbing people in their own neighborhood out doing this. And when it happens, the media is even scared to admit it's a racial attack by racist blacks against whites because MSNBC and other con men like Al Sharpton have legitimized it. So so if, if whites are going to be collectively blamed, which we know is a fraud for bad white people doing stuff, then, then, then what about this push by the new Black Panthers and others to say, hey, don't mug and thug in your own neighborhood. Go do it to whitey. I'm really concerned with this new thing, pull down Confederate flags out of people's backyards. I'm afraid there's going to be a flashpoint here and that the Democratic Party really is playing with fire. And, and I think they're trying to start a civil war. And that's what George Soros does in other countries. And George Soros is funding all the anti-cop stuff. What do you think's going on? Well, facts don't matter. The fact is that over the last 30 or 40 years, police shootings against blacks are down about 75%. Police shootings against whites have flatlined. And in 2012, the last year, the CDC has numbers, about 140 blacks were killed by cops. Over two and a half times that many whites were killed by cops. The fact is that there's a study that came out at University of Washington. Black and white cops are more reluctant to pull the trigger against a black suspect than a white suspect, probably because they feel there's going to be a raft of grief. And over the last 10 years, about 1,000 blacks have been killed by cops. About 2,000 whites have been killed by cops. Last year, 6,000 black people were killed mostly by other black people. Chicago alone, about 40 per month. Most of those are unsolved. Most of those are by and against other black people. And you mentioned violent interracial crime. There's about a half million to, to three quarters of a million violent interracial acts of crime, black, white, every year. That's murder, attempted murder, manslaughter, rape, assault with a deadly weapon. 75% are black perpetrator and white victim, only 15% the other way around. And I think, because I've, I've read the police reports, I've seen the news articles, the people say, I did it like that guy up in Michigan because they were white. They somehow think... Like the Klan goes out and kills some black person and hangs them because they deserve it. It literally is like Klan ideology the Democrats are trying to project on the black people. It's sick.
Well, that's what they're trying to do. As I mentioned before, the Democratic Party has to make black people feel like victims. Otherwise, how do you justify going in that voting booth and pulling that lever 95 percent for one particular party? You have to malign the Republican Party, have to call the Republican Party racist, have to say that they're trying to, as Debbie Wasserman Schultz once said, roll back the clock to Jim Crow and convince black people that the man's out to get you. Otherwise, you can't scare people into voting 95 percent for one party. Let's not talk about the facts. Let's not talk about the family. Let's not talk about what Obama's done to the black middle class. Let's talk about racism and social justice. That's what they're all about, because they can't talk about economic growth because they have no story. Well, it's really sad because up until Obama got elected, I saw a lot of racial harmony, people coming together. Uh, it was just really refreshing. And now I've never seen it so energized in my whole life, not not growing up in the you know early 70s and stuff in the 80s. And it just is it's so cold blooded. And I can just see the Democratic Party spin doctors the PR firms in their meetings going, we've doubled unemployment, people are waking up, they're upset, we're not delivering, just create balkanization. It's how the British controlled India with just a few thousand troops, was playing different religious groups off against each other. And they've just cold-bloodedly done this to us, uh, Larry. And, I, and I'm really concerned now uh, that they're going to put Hillary in and it's going to be not, oh, you're racist if you don't want Obamacare, it's going to be, you're, you're sexist if you don't support whatever she's doing. And, you know, it's just so insulting that I, I would love to have a female president if she agreed with basic freedom. I don't care if it's a woman or a man. You know, I like a lot of the stuff Margaret Thatcher did. It's so insulting to be told I don't like Obama because he's part African or that I don't like Hillary because she's a woman. I don't like Hillary because she's an absolute criminal monster. It is it is insulting. But I got to tell you, I once interviewed Kwesi Infumi, one of the few so-called black leaders I was able to get on my program. And I said, Mr. Infumi, as between the presence of white racism or the absence of black fathers, which poses a bigger threat to the black community? And to his credit, without missing a beat, Alex, he said the absence of black fathers. So some people are getting it. And I noticed that young blacks are far more, less likely than older blacks to self-identify as Democrats. They're not identifying as Republicans, but they're identifying as independents because they see what's happening to their economic future. They have no jobs. The black teenage unemployment is up. Uh, and people coming out of college can't get work. And, and, and they're saddled with a lot of debt. That's right. So a lot of young people are beginning to rethink their assumptions. And so that's probably the only silver lining I can think of to eight years of President Obama. And if the Republicans would line up with a more libertarian mindset and would promote things, then they would support them. But the Republicans are so bad in the leadership that I get why young people don't want to be involved with them as well. Larry Elder, thank you so much for the time. LarryElder.com. Folks can find your books, your essays, your radio and TV shows. Congratulations on the success uh, in the last 20 years of your work. Uh, it's just great to have you out there. Thank you so much for having me, Alex. I appreciate it. You bet. Great to have Larry Elder on with us.